just barely in there. Give it a little twist. Oh, look at that. Right along the edge. I'm touching again, moving up. Touch, 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 touch. Don't cover up every spot. Look at how that trunk is exposed in there. That's really cool. And we start to go, okay, we've done an awesome painting, Josh. Here's where it could get bad. This is where you could screw it up if you pushed it too hard. Hi, welcome back to Paint with Josh. Today we did a gorgeous cold blue 18 by 24 inch recycled Liquitex canvas made out of plastic bottles. It turned out fantastic. You obviously think so as well. That's why you clicked on this one. You want to learn how to paint it. So check the description down below. Make sure you find all the colors you need. Make sure you get your canvas nice and wet. Get ready to throw some paint on. Let's do it just like this. Holy cow, we're back. Where, where did the canvas go? Oh, here it is. So this is going to be one of our every single step video tutorials and i'm going to show you every single thing we're going to do from taking it out of the packaging it hasn't even been opened at all and we're going to paint it and prime it and do all that stuff uh, and i'll show you every single step and it's going to come out fantastically obviously you are new because you've seen the thumbnail i'm about to make it up as we go so uh this is the liquitex professional recycled canvas made out of 10 recycled bottles and you can actually feel it's quite heavier than the normal cotton canvas that uh, we normally paint on. So let's undo this old guy right out the pack. Is this ever anyone else? Like some of the times it's literally the strongest plastic I've ever had to pull apart sometimes, right? Is anyone else like that or is it just my weak arm? Maybe I'm just getting old and weak. Who knows? Sometimes it feels like it must be the strongest plastic ever. Okay, we got our little canvas tighteners here. Oh yeah, take that bugger out right there. Now, and take the camera's gonna place it right up here. It's actually very well made, super well made compared to some of those artist loft canvases. It's a little thicker, a little bit more beefy, right? And gotta do the oh man. You gotta do the cheek test. If you don't know what the cheek test is, that's the paint with Josh uh, patented cheek test, okay? And what we do, ah, uh, leave that up out the way. Here we go. What we do is you rub it on your cheek, especially if you're a man, right? Us man, our man hands are so used to dealing with such rough things that we lose sensitivity in them over time and you can't really tell by touching it, right? So touch to your soft cheek. If it's nice and soft, then it's gessoed properly like this one is. It says triple primed on the, <laughs> triple primed on the packaging, but you never know if it's been done properly or not. So give it the old cheek test, rub it on the side of the cheek. If it's soft, you're good. If it's rough, oh, Need to put more uh, more gesso on it. So we're gonna take our Bob Ross liquid white, and then we're gonna be right back. I'm gonna show you exactly what it looks like. Ready? Haha! -ha, look at that. I changed shirts on you, right? Right before the show. So now we're gonna get a little bit of liquid white into our brush. You see how it's dripping out? It's very wet and runny. We get the smallest little bit of it. We're gonna touch it different places across the canvas, allowing it to disperse differently everywhere. I'm gonna start to slide it around back and forth all over the place until it's a nice thin covered area. And then we're gonna get ready to start. I like this canvas though. This canvas isn't bad. This is that Liquitex recycled canvas. It's really nice. So far anyway, it's really nice. Let's see. Right on up, up, up. Now you want to have it nice and covered thin. You don't want to have a thick coverage of this liquid white. It's just really, really makes it hard to paint if it's too thin. So you really just want to put on a small amount and then I'll show you how we test it. Gotta test it, gotta test it, gotta test it. All right, if you have too much, you can always go back and wipe it off with a paper towel. So don't worry if you add too much. A lot of times, very in the very beginning, I added too much all the time. Always adding too much paint. All right, and then over time, you paint and paint and paint, and you just fall in love with painting. It's so fantastic. And then you get better and better and better and better and better at laying down that liquid white. And so when we come out, you get that smallest little bit on the brush. You can see all the little dimples in the canvas right from there. Now, we're going to be ready to go. You guys, you guys, I just love coming up here and painting for you guys. So, come over here. I need to get out a little bit more color. I figured we'd do like a cold blue scene. So, for the tutorial that we're also simultaneously filming along with the TikTok Live, we're going to get our Bob Ross Thalo Blue. We're going to put that out on the palette. 
And we probably have to get a little of the black out there too, just, just in case. Now, where is it? Where is it in this box? Oh, I love how I can never find anything when I want to find it. Hey, there's the black right there. So, a little bit of black, and I'll show you that the colors that we've got on the palette, and we'll get started to paint. You guys tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? What sandwich do you absolutely love to just munch on? That's what I want to find out. And I want to know where you are watching around the world. We get people that watch from all over the place. I'm talking about everywhere. So tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? And we're going to have a good time. Now, this is actually probably a really good opportunity to get out the brand new clear plastic jar, in which case you'll be able to see all those cool colors kind of dissipate into the jar. So I'm gonna grab my odorless mineral spirits. This is what we use. It's from a company called Clean Strip, right? You can use Jasco, whatever you use. Make sure it's odorless. You don't wanna have it be. Now this, this uh, jug is very full. And so what I'm gonna do is tip it where the lid is on the top. There we go. And then it'll spill out nice and gently versus glugging. You know what it's like? <laughs> and spits all over the place. Makes it really hard because it traps that air bubble inside. So I never knew to do that until like two months ago, right? And I'm 38, 38, I'm painting for four years. I've, I've always poured it out like this, out the bottom, like you normally would, right? Well, unknowingly, if you turn it upside down, it works a little bit better. So let's see you guys. Now for this last bit of white, I'm gonna use my, the last little bit of my old paint thinner that's in there. Oh, you like the fresh cut, everybody? Like that fresh cut we had? Coconut, don't get you're going to bump into the cameras and knock everybody over. There we go. We got the puppies up here tonight because they just seem so lonely downstairs and I wanted to bring them up. Got to have the puppers. Bring up the pooper pants. Nope, stay over there. Don't, don't come on screen. We're saving the planet and creating a new painting. Now, this painting is a little bit more expensive and let me tell you why it's more expensive. I wasn't given this canvas for free. I had to go spend $60 on this canvas alone, $59, $99, my own money that I spent on this canvas to be able to make you guys and bring you guys this video. It's not a sponsored video. They didn't send me anything. They haven't paid me anything. I'm literally trying it out because I'm literally curious at what this quote unquote recycled canvas is gonna, uh, gonna feel like. So if it's awesome, then who knows? Maybe it's worth spending the extra money to get it. And uh, if you really wanna save Mother Earth and you're really about it, you know what I mean? You'll, you'll do whatever you can do. So let's come in. I wanted to do a cold kind of blue scene. So I'm gonna show you. We've got our Meaden Crimson and the Meaden Lamp Black right there, right in front of that brown that we're not gonna use, right? And we've got a little touch of red, probably not gonna use it. A little bit of Thalo Blue, Alizarin Crimson, Midnight Black, Titanium White. So we have the Meaden Crimson, the Alizarin Crimson, the Thalo Blue, Midnight, uh, Thalo Blue, Midnight Black, Titanium White. All the colors that we absolutely love to use, right? How many times? do I use these colors? And we still come out with a different scene every time, right? Now let's come into this blue and you can see, we're gonna get real close, try to show you every step. We drag down that big thick color, all right? Drag it down, drag it down, drag it down. Loading up our brush full of blue. And because we took the Bob Ross liquid white and covered the canvas with that white paint, not just a, a bare dry canvas up there. We covered it with the white paint. Now we're gonna see how it interacts with being a plastic, recycled canvas. I'm very curious. So we're going to take our blue and we're going to come in here and just start to drop it down. Now, because we have the liquid white on the canvas, it starts to go from very dark to very light. The more and more and more you go, the more paint's going to fall off the brush and become lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter, right? So all dependent on the amount of paint that we put on the brush and our pressure that we're pushing on the canvas, right? The more we push on the canvas, the more paint's going to come off the brush and we're going to be able to slide that paint a lot further with that pressure all the way across if you want, right? Now, I want to try to leave, I don't know, maybe a little white area right where I ran that big blue stripe through. It should have been white, but we'll leave it over here anyway. So, and again, haven't added any extra brush. Look at how far this paint goes. It, I was teaching a class today uh, to uh, Jamie Lynn, and she said, the Thalo Blue runs 10 miles. I said, you are 100% right. It literally will go... You can cover your whole canvas from one little swipe through and load from your, your Thalo Blue. And it'll just get lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter the more we go, right? We're not trying to blend anything. This is not how we're going to leave the sky. But you want to get a little color up there 
just to start. Gonna go back to the Thalo Blue again, have it wash the brush, gonna load it straight back up, just like that. I forget to turn and look at the YouTube camera sometimes. Hi guys on YouTube, how do you like my hair? It's fantastic, isn't it? A little hard part, she did a good job. The, uh, the stylist hooked me up for sure, but I always forget to look at the YouTube camera and I just look over at my TV, which shows me the YouTube camera and the TikTok camera and my canvas. So forgive me for not making eye contact. Hi guys on YouTube, how you doing? <laughs> I might just cut that whole bit out of the video, it's fine. Now, we're gonna come back in here, dropping on a little bit more and bringing it down. Maybe we leave two little white sections in there. Why not? It doesn't matter what we do, it really doesn't. There is no rule book that says you have to have all covered in blue, cannot do anything else. All has to be exactly the way that Paint With Josh shows you how to paint it, right? Is that how we paint around here? No, I'll answer it for you right now. No, that's not how we paint around here. I like to show you that you and I can use the exact same colors they, and we can put our heart and soul and love into it and come out with wildly different, crazily different results. See, I was gonna stutter. I was like, don't stutter, just come up with the word you wanna say, find it, find, bam, see, bam. Now we're taking a little bit of our midnight black, right? And even though I've ran it through the pile many times, it hasn't really changed the color of the brush to black, right? You still see all the blue underneath there. So even though, and I'll go do it again, even though we've run it through the paint many times, it's not completely changed the color. You can still see it's deep, dark blue in there. Now we're gonna come back up into here. And even that many times, it barely changed the color of the blue, right? Because the amount of paint on the brush. So if we came over here, I barely noticed any of the black dropping off. It didn't really change it all that much. And we used a lot of paint. You saw me drag it through the thing like that, right? So let's go to the lamp black, right? By, by Meaden, you can see just with a little teeny bit I've only covered half, and you can see instantly which color, which half of the brush has the color on it, right? Because the Meaden colors are a little bit thinner, a little bit more wet, they slide and they go forever, right? Look at how dark that is, too. It doesn't want to blend away like the, the Bob Ross black wants to instantly blend away. You take a little bit of that guy, throw it down in here. Just a little touch, though, because that lamp black is so dark, barely even touching it. Now over here, I want to go a little bit harder because we've got that blue over the top. Bam, 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 bam. Now, how dark do we want to make our sky? Do you want to have that darkness come down? Like how far do you want to pull it down? Do you want to bring it around? How dark do you want to have yours? That's the question. That determines how much paint you use, right? The amount of paint that you use and the amount of paint that I use is going to be wildly different. Wildly different. Just taking the blue straight onto the brush. Nothing crazy. Let me pull this guy a little bit this way. Just have a little glare down here. We probably won't even use water. It'll probably all end up being blended across and blended over, so it's all fine. Doesn't even very much matter what it is, right? And you can take out all those streaks just by crisscrossing back and forth and back and forth, back and forth. You can do it so often and so many times that you just, you don't even have to look when you do it. You can look straight at you guys. Hi guys, how you doing today? Well, we just mix the canvas up, right? I know where I'm at. I don't have to look, it's fine. Now, again, we've got way too much paint on the brush. It's just to show you that you can literally not even look and see what's happening. Now, here's why we got out the new paint thinner. Look at that, oh, it's fresh, right? It looks like water, but it's definitely not water. Do not get it mixed up with your drink cup for sure. Now, we're gonna come into the paint. You can see it's like just touching, right? Just, just barely in there. Give it a little twist. Oh, look at that. Look at that color just erupts down. That's the coolest thing in slow motion, I'm telling you. Now, we keep our cup a little bit empty so we can do this. We can fling all the paint inside by spinning it, having it fling against the edge of the cup and start to fall downward, right? Which is why our cup gets so nasty and filthy and we only get the really cool videos every once in a while. Now, even though we've spun the brush and flung all the stuff out of there, you still have to really yank it into a trash can. like. As hard as you can. You know how you, you whip up a towel and you whip somebody like that? <laughs> you just whip right on the cheek. Aye! Right on the butt cheek like that, right? That's how you gotta whip this the thing into the trash can. You just whip it and it'll throw out a lot of fluid, right? That's still retained in the brushes. Then you bring out your old, gross beater bucket. It's basically a Home Depot bucket or a Lowe's bucket. I use them both. 
uh, with a golf ball basket down in the bottom. Now the golf ball basket is disgustingly dirty. It's four years old and um, I definitely wouldn't want to put even my range balls in there. That would be bad. These have just a bunch of nasty paint covered range golf balls, right? Always makes me think of my golf ball joke. Should I tell you my golf ball joke real quick? It's kind of like tennis elbow. It's, a, it's, a, it's actually a tennis elbow golf joke. If you want to hear it, let me know in the comments right now and I'll tell you. It's not too bad. I mean, it's, you know, it's too much build. It's probably not even going to be funny, so don't worry about it. It's fine. It's fine. Only the golfers would really appreciate it anyway. So if you golf, you would probably appreciate the tennis elbow golf joke. Tell it, says M. Vic. Sure, tell us. So, this guy's playing golf. And on every single, on the very first hole, hits his ball, goes out into the woods. He goes out, doesn't find his ball, but he finds a new ball, puts it in his pocket. On the next one, Next hole comes out, finds a new ball, puts it in his pocket. Next hole, new ball, in the pocket, in the pocket, in the pocket. 18 holes later, he's got a lot of golf balls in his pockets, right? Right around here in the middle. And uh, so he goes into the, the 19th hole, which is the bar uh, at the end of your round. And he walks up to the bar and he orders a drink and the bartender comes over and he goes, he's like, man, like what is that in your pants right there? You know what I mean? It's a big bulging thing. And the guy goes, oh, those are my golf balls. And the bartender goes, man, if that's anything like tennis elbow, I bet it really hurts. Uh, I thought it was funny. Uh, I thought it was funny because his, you know, his golf balls make it, you got, nobody gets me. It's fine. Nobody gets me. It's all good. There we go. I got one more joke for you, right? What's brown and sticky? A stick. That's it. As far as my comedic knowledge goes, I know nothing else besides that. There we go. All we're doing, judging how much paint we're dragging down, right? We're gonna cover this bit of white. It's gonna eventually get paint. There's already paint on the white bits. It doesn't have to be pure white. You don't want it to be pure. You just don't want it to be as dark as the rest of the sky, which is why we leave it sort of empty, right? Again, we wanted to have that little piece in between. I'm gonna use this bit of cloud, then this bit as a shadow, then this next piece as a cloud, all just because that's how we saw it, right? Does, that, does anybody like my joke or was it lame? Do you guys not like my joke? It's fine, you can tell me if my joke sucked. You can tell me if it sucked, it's fine. I didn't claim to be a jokester, I'm a paintster. A paintster, man. An OG paintster. There we go, and you know what's cool? You can totally get rid of that and not even mess with it if you want it. All right, now over here, remember, anytime you have those streaky bits, we're just making little X's. And if you have like mobility issues and you can't turn your wrists like that, don't worry. Go like this, be like a robot, right? One direction, other direction, right? We're not really turning our brush, just sort of tur uh, turning our wrist anyway, just turning the brush a little bit back and forth. You can go like this and then you can change it, right? Doesn't have to be a necessary crisscross every time. Doesn't have to be like that. When I watched Bob, I thought it did. He was like, okay, come down and create. And I was like, man, this is, you know, taking a long time. My wrist is starting to hurt after a while, especially when you start doing a really big canvas. You know what I mean? You're like, ooh, I don't know that I want to, uh, my, I, I got to switch arms. Hang on, I'm about to drop my brush right there. That would have been bad. Look at how I just look like I, 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 I just struggle with this left-handed. I am not, when, the only time I can do it left-handed is when I actually stand on the left side and show you guys my model side. Hi guys, but then I can't see the TV. I don't know what I look like. Hi guys. Look like a model from this side. Goonies character from the, but hey you guys. I know, it's bad. I don't know why, it's, it's, it's my lot in life. Look like Leo DiCaprio, guy from Goonies. Don't ask me why, I, I don't know. I can't figure it out. No matter what I do, I look like Sloth from the right and Leo DiCaprio from the left. I mean, I must say. <laughs> Oh, you guys, we like to have a lot of fun around here. We like to have fun, show you how to do stuff instead of just quietly, like, not telling you anything. And I'm just, okay, cool. You're a good painter, but can you, I want to kind of do what you do. Can you tell me how to do that, please? And then people go, you talk too much, bro. <laughs> ah, I'm trying to teach you, you clown. Oh, you talk too much. Okay, now we're going to save these two little bits of white, right? All we're going to do is we're going to set this brush down, actually, since we've got that fresh clean cup again, we're not gonna be able to see it as well, but just again, just the tip into the, the bristles, right? Just the tip. Then you can kind of shake it around. You watch all that excess color fall down through there, pull it up and, and twist it in the vacant area. 
releasing all of the little thinner. Now remember, you got a tail, uh, you got a towel, towel whip it. That like you do with your uh, with your girl or your friends. I used to chase London around. She thought she was good at it, and she would like try to whip me. I was like, no, no, no. I am the king of towel whips. So if you think you can towel whip better than me, come challenge me. <laughs> challenge you. We'll both get towels. It'd be like a duel. Just ha! Try to towel whip each other. I will always win. I, I'll leave a welt on you just like that. Just like a whip. <laughs> All right, so we've cleaned our brush. We've washed it off. We're gonna come down here. I wanna tell you guys, this painting is available for sale. I always forget, just drop my brush. I always forget to mention it, that it's available for sale. This is a Gak Doctor fan brush, by the way. You can find these on my Amazon store, amazon.com slash paint with Josh. You can read it right there. I'm not making it up. It says Gak Doctor. I absolutely love these brushes. I can't get enough of these brushes. They are so fantastic. And they're like they're like $9 for seven brushes. You can pack a seven of them for nine bucks. You can't beat that. You can't beat it. So we're gonna come in, we're gonna overload the brush full of white paint, right? Overloading it because normally when we're on a black canvas, we're very lightly loading the brush because the white shows so brightly on against the black, right? Here, it's not so dark and we're constantly mixing with white paint. So this white paint is gonna mix with that blue paint, right? So we have to add a little bit extra. And then all we're gonna do, let's say, I don't know, let's say you, you really dislike somebody, right? I'm just like, ugh, I'm gonna take this, all right, I'm gonna come up here and just be like, nah, 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 get rid of your face, die. Just whatever you wanna do, smush it, make it a mess, get after it, just pop, 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 pop. Doesn't matter what happens, right? Literally take the brush, throw it at the cat. It doesn't matter what you do. You cannot make a mistake making clouds. It's no possible way to make a mistake, okay? My whole on canvas was like, whoop, 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 whoop. Right now, we're gonna take our brush and we're, all we're gonna do is come up here and start making little mini circles. And when we make our little mini, little counterclockwise circles like this, right? All we're doing is blending the paint with the blue. Same that we did with our big brush. We're trying to do it on a smaller scale right here. And so we're coming in very light. And then sometimes if it's real thick, real bright in a certain area and you don't really like how it looks, blend it a little bit harder, push it harder. Bring some of that blue, Watch, grab some of this black from up here in the corner. All right, come in here, pop, 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 pop. Couple new little bits, couple more little circles, little swip swap, and you got like a far off base to your cloud out there that's about to drop some rain, right? There is no way to mess it up. If yours is gigantic, guess what? It's gonna be gigantically gorgeous, right? It's gonna be different than mine. That's the best part about art. We all use the same colors. We can use the same brushes. We can use the same technique, and we can have a million different results. That is art to me. That's the Paint with Josh way, and that's how we like to do it around here, guys. That's how we like to do it. So if you like that, and you like having fun, and I'm sort of, you know, kind of fun to watch, then make sure you hit the follow button. Hit that follow button, and make sure you go over and shop my store. Without sales in my Etsy store, I cannot continue to buy $60 recycled canvases and come up here and do free videos without having any revenue come into my store. So head over to Paint with Josh, Dot Etsy dot com, or just search your Etsy app for Paint with Josh, all one word, and that'll pull up my store. You can search for this painting. You can search for this painting underneath if you're down watching here on TikTok. This sunset one, it's available. Nice and dry, ready to throw into a box and ship out. So, tons of different stuff over on my store, paintwithjosh.etsy.com. Hey, it didn't drop the brush. Okay, I'm holding it. I'm hold You guys, you caught me. You caught me. All right, now, Remember, we left that little bit of lighter color, which has almost sort of disappeared now because we blended our bits down. So this is what you do. If you ever run into this problem, you're like, oh, I had a space, now I've covered it with paint. Well, guess what? All you really have to worry about is how bright it is up here to how dark it gets down here. And when you get into your darkest area, boom, you pop in a next little section of white, leaving some, maybe touching a little bit, maybe coming down coming over here. Well, looks like a little four leaf clover. If I could do it around the other side, I know I would totally not be able to do it, but you know what I mean, right? Now look, we mushed the whole one side of the brush and about half of the other side. There's still a little bit of paint out there. So how far can you get that to go? How much can you push it, pull it down? And literally you don't even have to, oh, I'm just backed against the thing. Oh, it's a brand new shirt. Oh, oh, oh no. Uh, maybe I got lucky. Can you guys see? Is there anything on my shirt? 
there has to be, right? It's got to be like blue right here. It's, it, it must be. There must be something because I didn't mean to do that. Dang it. <laughs> Brent, why, why do I always get, like, I get paint on everything that I own? It's not even funny. All right, then I was just going to show you that you don't even have to look at the canvas. You can literally do it backwards. Do it upside down. Come over here and make a big mess. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you do. Perfect. All right? It's come down way too far. I'm going to show you how you can fix it. We're going to start up here on the one that we're actually going to keep, right? Without washing the brush. Just, I mean, if you want, say you got too much paint on there, it's too dark, go like this. All right? No, it's not, it's not someone knocking at the door. It's literally me doing this. Hang on. Hang on. Hang on now, loves. Hold on. Here we go. Now, imagine this is my side of my little plastic table that I have over here. The, the paper towel is kind of hanging over the edge. So when I'm dabbing it, I'm kind of hitting the, the top of the, the brush on the top of the, of the table. And then the bottom and the middle of the brush kind of gets off and hangs over the edge of the table, right? And if you do it fast and you do it, I don't know, 10, 20 times, look at all the excess color and excess wetness that was in the brush right there that'll come out because you got to dab it off. Dab it, beat it off on a, beat it on a paper, dab it on a paper towel and get it nice and dry. Say, where are you going? Am I, am I boring you, dog? Am I boring you with my show? That's not good. If I'm boring Sadie, that must mean I'm boring you guys. She's trying to leave and go downstairs. There's no one here but us. Come on, babe. Lay down. Say, lay down. No, don't come over. You're going to knock the camera. So go lay down. Go lay down. Be a good dog. Be a good doggy. You crazy doggy. Literally this sweet, I, I, I don't know about you guys, right? I'm sure your guys' dogs are pretty cool, but I literally have the sweetest dogs in existence. Literally the sweetest chocolate lab you will ever see. Oh, she's, I just love you, sir. You're so cute. I love you. <laughs> All right, now, again, back to our clouds, right? We can dab off our brush on a paper towel, removing the amount of wetness, removing any excess paint that's on there without having to dip it into the thinner and clean it back up again, right? So we come in here. Come up here and we start to mix it. Did I ask for her help? I didn't ask for your help, madam. Thank you. We just start to mix it down very, very small, very light touch, right? Almost like, I liken it like if there was a sleeping baby and you were like, okay, I just want to check on it. I just want to give it, he's like so cute. I just got to go down and touch his cheek with the side, with the back of my hand, right? Not wake him up because, oh my goodness, if you wake him up, then we can't go paint. We got to go back and babysit. Nobody wants to do that. We want to keep painting. But you gotta go in and check on him, so just a little, then he goes, huh, and you go, okay, he's alive, let's go back, and we'll go paint. But if he touch his face too hard, it's gonna wake up, right? Same thing here. Very light little touch, so lightly. Now, down here into this cloud that we didn't wanna keep, right? You can literally blend it away, push, listen to the difference. ASMR, man, poof completely gone. There is no cloud. There never was, right? It's all up to you. What do you want yours to look like? Because I always say that. It doesn't matter. Now, this brush has gotten very blue since we've gone back in here. So you tell me, do we go up and touch this bit of white and start to mix it down? Or do we go back and wash the brush or get a new one? Tell me in the comments right now, what do you think? And uh, I'll take a drink since I always forget to take a drink while we're, while we're up here. So love me some Dr. Pepper. Oh, So fire. Clean or new brush? You wanna wash it? You wanna use the blue? See, wash or tap? No wash, says Kelly. Wash the brush, says Crazy Craig. Dr. Pepper's the best. x man Savo, I think that's what that said. Use the blue on the bottom, then clean it, right? Look at all your guys' ideas. All the ideas. Did you guys learn all these ideas from me? Did you? You can be honest. Be honest, did you? Okay, perfect, thank you. Thank you for boosting my ego. Anyway, I'm going to pretend that you all said yes. By the way, did I get any paint on the back of my shirt? Because I can't, I can't tell. It would have been over there. I would have, I would have come in and time. I felt it. I, like I literally felt myself bump into it, but I can't find the paint. Did you guys see the paint? Do I have paint on my shirt? Beat it off, says Carrie. Yep, right on to the paper towel. Just like always, right? No, okay, so I didn't get it on my shirt. I got lucky. We got lucky. Now. Let's use some of this blue and then we'll start to decide with our eyeballs what it's gonna look like as we mix it down. Instantly, 
started to go really dark and match the color of the sky, right? So maybe we stick to the bottom-ish area. We just start to mix. Maybe we bring these guys, and the more blue they are, the more they're going to seem like they're just sort of, just kind of, well, what's the word? Like, when they just sort of appear, you know what I mean? They just sort of coalesce and, and just, oh, you, you weren't looking. I mean, you were looking in the sky two minutes ago. You look back, boom, there's a cloud that wasn't there. There was no clouds in the sky, and all of a sudden, it's just sort of, what's that word? What's that word? It's just sort of kind of into our reality, just poof, this, I feel like an idiot. What is that word? Um, oh, goodness. It just sort of like, frick. I can't, I can't remember the word. A P, yeah, a P, materialize, that's a good one. That's a good one. It just sort of materialized, right? It just kind of faded into existence, right? Instead of out of existence and blended away, it sort of just kind of faded into existence, I guess. And so, remember guys, if you like what you see, give me a follow. I go live every night except Wednesday night. So luckily for you, uh, we're right in the middle of my work week. And I'll be doing this tonight, tomorrow night, Monday night, Tuesday night. And then I get a night off on Wednesday. So we have a lot of fun. I do have a YouTube channel. So if you don't follow me over on YouTube, we've got 77,000 subscribers on YouTube that would love to have you as one of our YouTube subscribing friends, right? It's all free to join on YouTube, by the way. You go over there, you sign up, uh, you, uh, you subscribe for free. You just got to click a little button. And I do have paid content if you want to learn more in depth. I do offer paid content over on my YouTube page if you want it, right? I don't tend to push it a lot because I have, I would say out of a thousand videos, I have about 850 free videos and about 150 paid for videos, right? So all depends on the level of learning that you want to get into but I've got something for everybody. I've got playlists for ultra beginners. And I'm talking about when I was a beginner and I was still learning and teaching and learning. I constantly learn every day. Every time we come up here and do a new one, I'm learning something new, right? So we've got the, like the beginner's list for the first year or two. Then the intermediate list when I kind of got a little bit better. I've got lists for expert painters. I've got lists for how to just do clouds, how to just paint a mountain in 12 minutes or whatever. Lots of videos over on YouTube. So go check out my YouTube page. It's Paint With Josh. Over on YouTube, there is no K on YouTube. The K is only on Instagram and uh, TikTok over here. Instagram is, it's actually, one of my girls, one of my mods, can you check and see if Instagram is now a higher following than TikTok? I think I'm at 386 on TikTok, maybe 343 on, on Instagram. So it's not as high yet. But can one of my mods check that out? One of my fabulous mod women that like to help me out during all these shows, you guys are awesome. Everybody follow my mods. When you see one of the mods, give them a follow. I don't know how you notice that they're mods, but give them a follow. Now we got our wicked awesome little sky out there. But well, you could do anything. You could put a mountain. Put a mountain over here. You could put a flat top mountain in, right? A little mesa. You could do whatever. You could have a bit of ocean, right? You could have a, a, a lake at the bottom. Whatever we want, right? If I was, if I was not gonna put a mountain in and I was just gonna do I don't say, I mean, it really looks cool like this. It almost looks like it's finished. If we just blended the bottom, I mean, who would buy it like that? It's a, and it's, it, it's obvious I'm gonna add some more, but anybody in the comment, would you purchase it? Would you buy a painting like that, right? I mean, it's sort of done, but it, there's also 10 tons of things you could add to it. You know what I mean? Mountain with a lake, that's a cool one. Do water below it, I like that. Looks like heaven, that's cool. T Panda says, yup, right? We know we're gonna add some, but how long does this take? We've been filming for 30 minutes. Well, 31 minutes. We started at eight o'clock, it's 8.31. So, and I've been taking my time and going slow and stuff because I, I pretty much plan to just do a few mountains and maybe some trees at the bottom. Uh, but now I've all of a sudden sort of changed my idea and I'm looking at it going, ooh, there's so many little things that we could do. You know what I mean? You could put a mountain, you could put trees, you could put snow you could put water you could do anything we want right that's what's so great about painting you literally do whatever the heck we want to do double rainbow looks like water already that's the point right and that is key key for success right? if we literally went like this blended it out and then added some more darkness down to the front down here pfft, call it done <laughs> just have a far off bit of lake where you can't even tell where the water and the sky even meet. You know what I mean? It's somewhere back there. 
somewhere in this region that the, that the water and the sky horizon would come down and touch, but you can't really tell. That's freaking awesome. But I've got this painting listed for way too much to just stop right here. <laughs> this, uh, this painting is listed for, I think it's just under 300. So it's like 290 something. But again, came out of my own pocket. This is not a free canvas. There's nobody paying me to promote it. I wanted to see the difference and the canvas was 59.99 for one. And it's, I mean, you know, it's it's really nice. I like it. I, I, I don't know that I would spend that much every time because if I, especially if you weren't selling paintings and you were buying $60 a pop for canvases, that would get very expensive in my opinion, but they are really neat. I very much like them. I very much like them. So what to do with it is the question. Let's make a big old mountain. We said we we're gonna do mountains. Let's throw a giant old mountain in there, right? Now, in order to make a mountain, what three colors do we mix up in order to create the deep dark shadow that Josh likes to use in order to create mountains, trees, bushes, whatever it is. It's a very deep dark mix. All right, what are those three colors? Can you type them into the comments of wherever you're watching right now? You watching on YouTube? Did I happen to chop up this video into a little tiny clip and you're watching on Facebook for a few minutes? Hey, Give me a like, give me a thumbs up, do whatever you gotta do to help this video reach more people, right? That's the whole goal. Is this my first time watching? We got 100% of the people watching is their very first time watching? That's pretty cool. Thank you guys for tuning in. So we do this every night, uh, except for Wednesdays, literally every night of the week. Sometimes we do ocean scenes, sometimes we do mountains, sometimes we do summer, sometimes we do winter. Uh, it all depends on how I'm feeling at that current moment. Now, if you've been paying attention to the comments, you would have known that the three colors are crimson, black, and blue. And I just saw Lori Stidham. Lori Stidham or Stidham. My last name's Kirkham, right? But people call me Kirkham because it's H-A-M at the end. I'm like, no, please. So is it Stidham or is it Stidham? Never knew. Stidham, stid her, stid him. There we go. Put a bit of our dark color onto our knife, right? It's probably a bit too much. It's probably still too much. There we go. Little bit on there. Now we get to decide. What do we want our crazy bit of mountain to look like? I want to come down and have this just sheer, just enormous, crazily shaped, depth filled little mountain, right? All we're doing, smushing some paint on, right? What are we worried about? Are we worried about what it looks like down here? Are we worried about what it looks like in the middle, right? Or are we really worried about what it looks like up on the very tip top, right where it meets the clouds. Is that the edge that we're really focusing on? And then everything else underneath, we don't give two craps about, right? We don't care what happens down here. It doesn't matter. I'm watching, I'm gonna change this whole thing. Just like that, come in here, cover over the whole bit. All I'm trying to do is make a nice dark line around the edge, right? No matter what yours looks like, a little dark line out there. Everything else underneath does not matter. And in fact, if you don't want, if you've ever been painting and you've been using a palette knife and then you go to make your mountain and boy, oh boy, your mountain just goes all the way down the canvas, right? Or all the way across, or it gets too big. It's probably because you didn't scrape up that whole big mix of paint, right? Had you had scraped all that excess paint off, it might not have grown so far. So. While we're gonna get rid of all that off of our knife, we're gonna pick up our one inch brush and we always talk about the three P's of painting. Now, who knows P1? Don't give me all three, I just want P1. P1 in the comments right there. Who's got P1? P1. Ooh, a double flip and I caught it. That's kinda cool. Penguin. <laughs> that guy says paint. That's right, right? We take the amount of paint that we have on our knife, we mush it up here onto our canvas. And now we know there was a certain amount of paint up there. Now with the second P, P2, right? What's P2 as we take it and we start to determine how far our mountain's gonna grow, what the shape of it's gonna be, all dependent on what? What are we using? What are we using? Potatoes. Peacock and pressure, says Kelly. Everyone else is just messing around. Kelly's taking it seriously. Thank you, Kelly. <laughs> it's all right. We mess around on Fridays, uh, on Saturdays and Sundays, and 
basically every day except for Monday and Tuesday is a day that we can mess around, right? I almost hit up Lake Man Arts, Cloud Zaddy. I almost hit him up and was like, hey, you want to paint tonight? But, you know, I, I, I've been busy. I'm busy. Now, all dependent on that pressure, right? We get to determine how far the mountain grows in what certain direction. All depends on the pressure that we're pushing, right? You really want to push hard and drag it way down here. You can do it, right? You can clearly do it. I'm going to keep it real soft and small. A little bit of pressure. You're not dragging it so far, right? Make this one a little bit less dark. Up to you. The more you mix it, the less it's going to be. It doesn't matter because we're going to end up covering it anyway, right? That's the biggest thing. No matter what we put up there, most of it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. It's up there as a background color, right? Maybe we had a bit over here. Maybe this guy, oh yeah, it's down like that, right? Like these ones start to come down straight like this. We have this wicked little thing. We have a lot of darkness back in there, in which case we want to make sure it's dark. So we're going to add some more paint, less pressure so we don't blend it all the way out, right? That's going to be cool. We'll have a big, like a gnarly looking thing coming out of this guy. It'd be very neat. Now, a little bit more darkness. Go back. Create our little bit of our sort of glacial piece where that's going to sit. Pop it in here. Pulling it down. Now, we're just going to go back and basically we have our, our stencil already lined out, right? We kind of know what we want it to look like just based off the direction that we pulled the brushes and did our thing. Right? We're like, okay, this is sort of what I want it to look like. Now, it can totally change, right? Remember, you gotta do that tail whip. Flip it into the garbage can. Go back, beat the devil out of it, right into the bucket. Yeah! It's the funnest part. It's absolutely the most fun part of it. Just beating the devil out of that brush. Now, again, our whole shape can change. We can come in and add new mountains. We could add a whole nother cloud underneath this mountain. All things as we move forward, right? Now we have our giant pile of paint, that very dark paint, and then we've got our blue paint and our black and our white that we're really, much, uh, really pretty much gonna be using from here on out. We're gonna take a little of the blue, mix it down here, right? Put it down there at the bottom, a little touch. Just a little bit of blue, right? Take that, grab up some of that white. You need a fair amount because the white is gonna change with the blue so fast and it's gonna instantly start to Go bluer and bluer and bluer, just like that. Now we have this very light colored sky blue, right? Now what we want to do, mix up a little of our dark mix into it, which is going to dull it down just enough to where it'll just sort of barely stand out against our dark color back here. Now, before we do anything else, let's wipe off the knife, nice and clean, go back, grab double the white that we just grabbed, right? Double the amount of white, and then one little snippet of blue from that little bit. See, we just got it right out there on the end. A little piece of blue out on the end there. So now let's find a new place. I guess we'll put it up here. And we're gonna mix that guy together, right? And because it's got that little touch of blue, it's gonna be so just minutely different from the pure white, but it's gonna look super bright white when we put it out there way off in the distance, right? So just like that, we've got our Shadows down here, got our highlights up here. You can almost tell the difference between the two things. One's pure white, one's got that little tinge of blue to it. Don't need it to be the purest of whites furthest off in the distance. That's not what we want. Now, we're gonna come in, we're gonna do our shadows first. We scrape up part of that blue. I love doing the shadows first because it gives us the ability to go back and cover over what you don't like, right? So say we take our bit of shadowing and off the, let's say off the front side of this peak, right? Normally we would put our snow on this side and then our shadows on the back side over here. But let's use this guy as a, as a shadowy little bit back there. Just sort of pretty much pulling straight down. It's gonna be a wicked little cliff back there. Now maybe off this guy we hit and we started to slide down this way, right? Eventually if you, if you imagine you're falling straight down, you're gonna hit a spot where you're eventually gonna to start to slide and start building, you know, maybe there was a rock slide, maybe the snow got built, maybe there was an avalanche and it came down and it hit Start to slide down our little ridge right there, right? Very lightly and with the, the knife sort of almost hitting the canvas is what we want to do. Okay, we're gonna come over here. Again, the shadowy sides are gonna be off the right. So this whole right side is gonna be in this little bit of blue, blue tinge. It doesn't have to all be blue, right? And then 
normally where we would have our shadows in here is where the sun is gonna hit it. It's gonna actually be really cool. But even with the same bit of blue, if we just pull down in a different direction, you can make little differences just by those little directional poles, mixing it in a little bit more with that dark color. And now we can tell we have a bit of uh, like a ridge right up here on the edge that goes right over that bit that's hanging down, right? It's got that straight part to it, very cool. Now, most fun part is when we go start throwing white on this sucker, really lighten it up. So let's come into our little white, our quote unquote white, our white pile, which we know is a little bit, uh, it's got that little bit of blue in it. And let's maybe come off of this side, we'll come up and touch like that and just let it rip down, right? Very light pressure will allow it to break and you gotta do it fast. If you do it slow, oh, it's so hard to judge by doing it slow. Maybe we come up in here, a couple little bits, just kind of stuck out a little bit, a little bit extra, right? Little things kind of projecting out that way. Very cool. Just by changing the angle of our knife, right? Maybe this side, pull it down, so to feed down those little pieces of white as they're sliding down our mountain. Over here, we're going the same direction with those same little bits. The whole thing basically in our brain has come all the way down here. We know that the whole mountain would have come all the way down this way, except we know we're also gonna stick something else in the front of it. So we don't need to paint the entire thing. We come up here, we got another little spider, right? Pops right up into those shadows, projecting distance back there, right? Now off the back side of that guy, maybe, a little bit of light ended up down there. Just a touch, just kind of getting picked up. Boom, amazing, amazing what you can do, right? Come back in here, just lightly. We're gonna start to slide down. Normally, again, where we would have our shadows if our snow was coming from this direction, but because the light's coming from this direction, it's hitting that little bit right there. And if it's hitting there, maybe, just maybe it's picking up in different pieces along the top side of this guy, right along the edge. <laughs> As you slide it down, picking up little different bits, right? Doesn't all have to look the same. We always say that. Now, maybe this guy, we can change directions in all directions and pull it out almost like a little clock. Every which way. Very cool. Maybe since we got that same color way off in the distance, there might have been a little bit of light extending, reaching way back there behind the edge of our old mountain, right? You never know until you put it up there. So try it, see what happens. You can always wipe it off, whatever, right? Very cool. A little bit straight down the side. Maybe we picked up a little bit more of that light off the back side of here, right? Jagged though, nothing has to be perfect. Don't want it to be perfect. If it's perfect, then it's not good in my opinion. And look at that giant thing that almost looks like a, a chunk, like an ice cream scoop came down, grabbed up a whole big chunk of that mountain, took it away, all because of how we shattered it, right? All different. I like that, it's very neat. Now, come back with our two inch brush. This is the part that we love. Whoa, about threw the brush into the canvas right there. Taking the brush, very light amount of P2. Now, if you weren't here earlier when we were going over the three P's of Paint with Josh and you're like, what is P2? Shoot, I was late to class. I should have been here on time and I don't know what P2 is. Maybe somebody in the comments will help you out by saying what our P2 is, the second P of Paint with Josh. What is P2? Anybody? Anybody know? Type it out. If you think I'm not reading your comments, I am. Type it out. Patricia, right there. Patricia Embody. Right there, pressure. She knows. They knows. The amount of pressure, right? And then angle is next. Angle is very important. If we had these guys, our amount of very, very, very light pressure, our angle was pulling straight down, so we pull those guys straight down, just a little. Go back over those spots that we touched right there cleaning everything up, right? Darker and darker back into this spot. Now, up in here into your mountain, I do not suggest that the beginners come all the way up to the top like Paint with Josh and do that. You don't have to, it's not a requirement. Uh, it's just a little, it makes it dry just a little bit faster. What if we put, watch this, a little touch. Boom, just a little, oh yes, a little bit out there, right? A little piece where the, where the, uh, the light came down, just enough to light it, just a little. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. Boom. Fantastic. We've got a frozen bit of glacier out there. Now, since we've softened our piece of bottom by going up from the top, going along in those same angles, right? If we came down this way with our knife, we have to go back up this way with our brush. So if we came down this way with our knife, are we going to go this way with our brush across all these bits? Or do we go along with the grain, right? We don't want to go against the grain. 
that would take all those pieces and ruin all of our cool little details, which you don't want to do. You want to keep those things. So go with the grain, which you're going up, which means you have to change as you go from one side to the other. It's like this, like a big old pendulum. Which way do we go, right? Now, I always get the question, how do you make the mist, Josh? Well, the mist really pretty much makes itself. We're going to take the brush. We're going to start to do little taps, right? This whole thing's got a bunch of snow all over, a bunch of white paint anyway. Right, so what we're going to do is we're going to start to tap it. But we're not just tapping it straight down, not doing it in a random pattern. We're coming in and we're working the mountain out a little bit further, just like a typewriter, right? So you tap, 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 bring it down. Come back up. Oh, well, with this guy, we've got to start going this way because we came down the other way. So we tap, 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 right? Tap, 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 tap. All we're doing, back and forth, just like a little typewriter, coming up to the next spot, going the same direction that the mountain is heading. Right? Making it soft, making it blend. Every time we tap that brush on there and smush it, right? You like it. Do whatever you want to do. You can Michael Myers this sucker. Just whatever you want. As long as you're 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 kind of every time that you hit, right? We're, we're hitting in, the bristles are spreading out and coming back. And spreading out and come back. Spreading out and come back. Each time it does that, it's mixing in with that white. All the while mixing in with our white paint underneath. And that is what's going to give you that misty, foggy look, right? Again, all we did was make a couple little counterclockwise circles. Poof, you have a floating mountain way out in the distance where you can almost imagine there's more of it down here. We just can't see it, right? Just can't see it. So you guys are going to tell me where you're watching from. What's your favorite sandwich? Ooh, and I'm going to read out. We'll give out, uh, call out some shout outs and different stuff. 91% of people say, yes, I love this painting. And then I'm going to ask you for that third P. We got T Panda says, bologna, Italian sandwich, Boston meatball from Texas. Liquor ball sandwiches, says Evil J Studio. Hungry for nachos. God, this is beautiful. Thank you, Tiffany. Please give me a follow. I love you. Mm. Uh -huh. New York grilled cheese and tomato soup. Is there any better combo? Is there any better? I mean, besides like like beer and pretzel, you know what I mean? Like a big fat pretzel and nacho cheese actually with the, the beer cheese. Fantastic. No better, no better uh, combo in the world than that, right? So all we're doing just like this. Now we have to decide. You guys tell me, do we put a cloud right down in here and then decide what to do at the bottom? Or do we bit, uh, put a, a bit of forest far off, a little bit of trees in this sort of U shape? Or do we come in and add a cloud? You guys let me know. I'm the only painter. It comes on live and lets you tell me how to paint and where to put stuff and what to do, right? I don't, I don't accept your, your uh, suggestions all the time, but sometimes I do. Sometimes. Sometimes you guys have good ideas, and sometimes I just can't do what you want to do. It's just not like somebody said waterfall earlier, right? If we were going to do a waterfall, I'd want the bottom of my canvas to be black already. And that would make it 10 times easier to do a waterfall. We got trees. We got clout. You don't listen. I know. I know. I just ask you guys because I just want to see what you'd say. We got a cabin, we got forest, we got trees. It's either trees or clouds, guys. Trees, I see a lot of trees. All right, we'll do trees. Somebody named Valerie wrote like 50 pine trees. <laughs> pine tree, pine tree, pine tree, pine tree. Just like that, that's what we gotta do. So let's come in. We have the amount of paint still left over from making our mountain, that dark pile. If you don't have any more left, you need to mix up blue and crimson and black into this really dark mix right down in there. So pause the YouTube tutorial right now. You know, you like every time you pause it, you like, make the weirdest face because you weren't expecting to be paused at that moment. <laughs> so uh, we're going to come into that darker color, right? Mixing it up back and forth, back and forth, wiggling it. That way you get it nice and crisp on the brush down here, right? So we decide just by tapping it. Now watch, after about 20 taps, it starts to change from being very sharp to being less sharp. In which case, rotate the brush over, use the other corner, get sharp again, right? Now, you guys let me know, right? Does it look better this way? Or would it look better if our treetops were way down here, right? Because I always tell people, you can't leave too much space in between. If you leave too much fog, right? It's almost like, oh, I liked my mountain so much that I didn't want to bring anything else close to it. So I just left it way down here, right? This 
makes it look like there's more distance actually than this. This looks like you forgot to put something in up here, right? If you just leave about an inch to a half inch, maybe two in dirt certain places, that is how you create that distance look, which sort of accentuates the fog that we had not created, right? We didn't do any, we didn't add any extra paint. All we did was just kind of tab, uh, just kind of dab down the paint that was there already. We didn't add anything new. So we come up here, right? We come up a little bit higher. That's why if your mountain and your fog is this U shape, your trees should be sort of similar because that's gonna create the best amount of distance behind those trees and into the mountain, the distance, you know, what's over the tip top, what's behind the last tree? Does it drop off and then the mountain comes back up or is it right on it, you know what I mean? All that mystery, that's why they call it mist, because it's mysterious what's back behind there. And you can see, number one beginner rule, <clears throat> right? This is how I can tell you're a beginner. If all your trees are all the same height, if they're all the same bit across and there's nothing that pops up above it, then I can go, I got you. Yep, he's on like number two, three, maybe. Because I did the same exact thing. Straight across. <laughs> you know what I mean? Give it like a little heart monitor action. Pop up, pop down, come up a little bit, come down. Sometimes if you have like maybe one that you didn't like, or if you just got a big enough space, you can pop in. Maybe there was a guy back there who had a few more little details on it. And by details, I mean like he's just a little bit wider, had a couple little branches off in the distance, right? Completely mushing him up. We're only really worried about the tip top. Everything else is hidden amongst all these other trees. Yeah. That one's just a little bit bigger. He's like the granddaddy of the forest. He's been out there the longest. Okay, now how are we gonna make the mist? I told you how to do it on our, on our mountain, right? Now for our, our trees, we have to come in and do the same thing, but are we gonna take them and do the same bit of the mountain? and drag them out in this angle this way, or do we come straight down and bring that mist straight down? You guys tell me what you think, what you think. Let me know, thanks for all the follows, guys. I just love y'all so much. I wanna go down, down, says Alyssa. Katrina says down, Denise says down. Baby, down, 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 down. Mm -hmm. No, nobody? Okay. So you guys are 100% correct. We're gonna take the paint, we're gonna go down, right? Just dabbing it, a couple little dabs. Dab, 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 Whee! Right? Make your miss like that. The more that you do it, the more it's going to interact with the liquid white that's underneath, right? The more you're gonna drag that darker color down, it's gonna become part of the same color down here. And then we won't be able to tell where the bottom of the trees are. The bottom of the trees down here, are they up here? Are they right at the top? You know what I mean? It's hard to tell because you have that mistiness in there. So dab it in, bring it down. Dab it in, bring it down. Just literally smack with just the top few bristles, right? Just little bits. I'm trying to turn my brush on the side to show you guys instead of having it out here. All right, but that's all we're doing is just grabbing the top few little bits and pushing it down and mixing it up. Mixing it up, mixing it up. And the more that we mix it, we drag it, blend it, more bits of fogginess you'll have in there, right? Now, in order to fill in the rest of the trees, we very lightly bring it up. You don't wanna to go too far, you'll drag all that bit of paint up there, right? Very light, very light, very light. Soft little bit, straight up. Sometimes you gotta push a little more. You want them to fade a little bit more? Watch this, push them a little bit more. They'll blend in with the color underneath more, making it harder to see where they begin, right? This guy over here, Take him, drag him down, mix it up here, there, and everywhere. And then you don't know where those trees are, where the bottom is, what's in front, what's behind. Nobody knows. Nobody knows where the bottom of my trees are. Nobody knows where the trunks is. No, nope, nobody, nobody wants Josh to sing anymore right now. <laughs> Just shut up and paint, please. Paint with Josh. All right, I got you guys. I got you. We'll shut up. Now, let's decide, <clears throat> since we have our little bit of our fogginess, right? And we can get to decide how far our trees go down before we hit our snowy hill or river or water or whatever, right? 
whatever's back there. Thank you for the little gifts, by the way. I can't. Are they roses? I can't. Let me see them. Are oh, they roses? Thank you, Big D. Big D. Thank you. Uh, by the way, guys, anybody watching on TikTok, I now have a Discord group. If you, I guess, if you send me like one coin, thank you for the, the thingy. <laughs> I guess if you send me like one coin or the equivalent of one coin, then you get an invite to the Discord. I don't know how it really works. <laughs> Honestly, I don't really know how it works. Um, but that's what I hear anyway, I guess. So come join us over in Discord. We got like, I don't know, 10 people so far. There's like 600 members of my TikTok channel that have actually sent me a coin uh, or more, right? And so uh, eventually maybe all those people will see it and get in there. But if you, uh, if you, however you have to join, I don't know, you guys probably know better than me how to join, uh, how to join Discord. It's all kind of new to me. I had to have London set up my Discord group, and then, uh, yeah, I just know how to go in there and post pictures and stuff. That's all. Okay, let's see. Now, I want to add, yeah, right there. What if we put in a little tree off in the distance, right? So we're going to load up our brush, a little bit of paint, same way that we always do. And these guys are going to be a little bit bigger, so we're going to go a little taller than the tree in the back and a little bit lower than wherever you think your base of trees is out there. Coming in at this certain angle, we're gonna to start to push against and pull away, right? And if you push and you pull away, and you push and you pull away, you get these little fingers out there, right? When the paint goes together, it goes like this. Push it, and then when it goes apart, it pulls apart. You leave some on your brush and some against the canvas, and it's like, wait, come back, right? Gotta leave those little fingery bits. So make sure your paint brush has enough paint on it to leave a little bit of texture. Don't mush it so many times that you get rid of all the textury little fingers because then there won't be anything for our highlights to grab onto. And when that comes, that's the fun part, right? Doesn't have to be perfect. Does not have to be symmetrical. Same on this side, same on that side. Trees grow all sorts of crazy ways and it doesn't have to do nothing. I was gonna say the D word, but it doesn't have to do nothing. It doesn't have to do a single bit. It doesn't have to look like the tree that you have outside in your front yard or your favorite tree that you go when you're on your hike and you stop at and you lean against, scratch your back like an old bear. Doesn't have to look like anything. All we gotta do is have it look sort of like a tree. That's pretty much it. Now we get to determine where our tree sits, right? To sit right down here, in which case we pull our, there goes the timer. Oh, that's it guys, show's over, hang on. Boop, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. All right, where does the base sit? The higher we push him up, further it's gonna make him go back, right? So if we keep him down here in the front, it all determines where the bottom is, literally it. Now, what if we took this guy, he had a little friend next to him, but his friend was just a little, it's a little sticky tree. So it's very thin, and then it comes down and we push in a little bit harder as we get to the bottom, which basically spreads the bristles out, right? Just like that. Now, we come back, and we're gonna grab a little liner brush. Little liner brush, where they at? Uh, I can't find the one that I want to use, so I guess I'll have to use this one. Let's see. Over here and there, we're going to get a little bit of our odorless mineral spirits onto the brush, dab it into or let it drip off into our thicker pile of darkness, the same pile we just created those trees out of. We roll it through, we spin it, we twist it, then we come up here and we just start making little branches. Right. The more thinner and or odorless mineral spirits you have in your brush, the easier it's going to put the deposit off of our tree and leave little details, right? Easier way it's gonna do that. Now you can't go back, you can't wanna force it. If it starts getting hard to do or if it doesn't deposit off of the brush and leave little fancy branches, then you probably don't have enough paint on there, right? So go back or enough thinner, more like it on there. Go back, you get a little bit more thinner back in do whatever we want to do with these little guys pull off little branches in different directions not every branch gets to grow right some of them start and they break off halfway through so nothing too crazy just like that guys now all depends where we come in with this white right what do we do do we take a bit of white down in here and just get it onto our brush and it's gonna to wanna to mix in quickly, so we determine what we want it to look like. And pull it down this way. Remember, all of our light is coming in from the left. So the left side of our little hill is going to be bright 
versus the right side, which is gonna be a little bit darker, in which case we go into our blue color that we use for our shadowy bits. We pull that blue off in the other direction. So you have white and then blue. So that very, it very simply tricks our eye into thinking it's just all the same white, but we know it's not, right? We know it's not. So let's wash the brush, uh, dab the brush off on a paper towel. Don't need to really wash it. Don't need to really wash it, right? And you wanna do long strokes when you're doing that, that bit of snow. And that way it'll blend out, it comes lighter here, and then the more and more, more you go, the more it blends away. That's what you want. And then you come back again with a bit more brightness and say we had another hill that came in this way. Sliding down like that, right? All depends what we do and where you cut it off. Those little bits of brightness, those little lines, those little things. How's it coming down? All right, the more we push on it, the more it's going to blend. And then how are we going to make it look some uh, like it's sort of roundish, right? We almost need to pick a pivot point and then start in that same spot, go outward, just like that, right? And then our whole little bit of unpainted canvas over here looks like shadowy snow when we didn't have to do anything, right? All we did was put a stripe of white and like three, four stripes of white going this way. <clears throat> Literally it. Let's see. All right, so we come in like that. Now again, I just want to brighten it up a little touch. Bits. So add those, we start going back to our little kind of pivot spot over here, pulling it out, letting it blend back and forth. Got all these little angles, <laughs> little thing happening out there, right? Now we're going to come back in. Remember, guys, this painting is available for sale. If you purchase it, you get to name it, you get to choose the name, and uh, it's free worldwide shipping. So no matter where you are in the world, I'll ship it straight to you if you want to get it. So let's come over here, we're going to drop this guy down. Boom, right there, right? Not taller than the mountain, but sitting much lower than the mountain, which is, and much lower than our guy back here, right? Which is going to make it stand out as much closer. Now we're gonna load up our brush again, the black and blue. And right about the time that we finish this, I've gotta get out of here quick tonight because I gotta go pick up my daughter from the, the bouncy place. So we're gonna finish these trees. We're gonna highlight them. And then we're gonna say goodbye to everybody. It's gonna be an awesome little show. Already been more than an hour. So as we come in, all we're doing, kind of popping in, working those branches outward, right? Working them from the middle, going back, loading up the brush again, black and blue, black and blue, black and blue. Come in, we hit the front, go out, pop, pop, maybe extend it a little bit out, a little bit further, right? Now again, if you want to go a little bit further, all you gotta do is touch it, touch it, touch it, touch it, touch it, touch it. And the faster that you do it, and the more random that it is, the cooler it is in my book anyway. The more different little things, right? You see, we've only done the one side. Still got to do the other side of the tree, which a lot of times is harder for you guys to see from your angle, which is why I do this side first. Come out. Get it all textury. Going it all in. That's why we don't put too much white snow down, because we don't want that dark paint to interact with all that white snow either and become lighter. Now we're going to come over on this side. I'm going to start popping it out. So often you make it a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger, and a little bit bigger. And then you got this pretty symmetrical little tree. And remember, it doesn't have to be the most perfect thing in the world. It doesn't have to be the most perfect shape. It doesn't have to have the most perfect sharp little branches or anything. It can come out a little bit further in one place and not in another place. All up to us what we want to do with it. All right, now these little guys, the big ones usually have just a little buddy. A little buddy that was living next to them. All right, this little buddy is not so filled in. Right, maybe you can even skip a couple areas on him. Bring him down where he's got a little exposed trunk, right? Or if not, you go back and you fill it in. All what you like, not, not up to me. I've done them every which way you possibly can. And now I, I just kind of like doing them a certain way. And people go, can't you ever paint anything new? I'm like, oh my God, I've got over a thousand videos. I painted everything, every which way, right? I like them this way. That's why we paint them this way. So funny. Boom, right? Bring it down. The further down you bring those, the closer they're going to look to us down here. And remember, this is in the shadowy side. So why don't we take some blue on our brush, a little bit of white, and a little bit of blue as we start to slide these guys outward. Pretty straight, though. They don't have to go on this crazy downward, you know, 
45 degree thing. It doesn't have to be like that. Pulling them down, sliding it out this way, over here, over there, sort of back up into the tree. It helps it make it look more natural to me. If it's kind of slid up into the tree versus right, uh, right, bright on the edge and then down, right? Now let's take a bit of brightness of our white since we know all of our sunlight is hitting on this side. Just brighten up a little part of our ridge. And again, pull it up into the tree. Sweep it up into it like that. Looks like a, a windblown swept thing. More natural anyway than, to me anyway. Doesn't have to be. Doesn't have to be on yours. But all these different colors, light blue, a little bit of light white, brighter white, darker blue, right? Lighter, brighter blue over here. All these changes and differences determine what our little little scene is going to look like. Take this guy over here, taking a little bit of our white, it's literally tapping it onto the side of the trunk and pulling the knife away and moving up a little bit. And touching again, moving up, touch, 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 touch. Each time we're moving up, we're not trying to cover all the darkness though, right? We got to leave that little bit of light and a little bit of dark around each side of that thing. Now, you can always go back with your palette knife and just go right on top of where those little shadows would be adding little teeny tiny bits of white. Again, they don't have to cover the whole branch. If you cover up the whole branch, we're not gonna have any depth, right? You're gonna be like, oh, there's a lot of uh, just white right there. It's obviously, it's a, it's a snow corn dog just floating off the edge of that tree because it's obviously not a branch. It's not dark enough to be a branch, you know what I mean? Little bits, teeny tiny things, and then leave that darkness underneath and that allows it to look round. Just like that, so cool, so cool, guys. Take a little bit of our white and add maybe a little trunk in there from this guy that we could see, maybe up there. It doesn't all have to be the same, and they're probably gonna end up covering most of the trunks, which is the fun part, right? You just leave a little bit. Oh my, Sadie, we're I'm in the studio here, Sadie. You are foul, you are disgusting. Now it smells like dog fart in here, thanks to you. Appreciate it, Say. How many people we got watching while you're just smelling up my whole studio with your farts? 1,000, 1,100 people, Sadie, are smelling your turd. Hey, thank you for the gift. Oh my God, that really is really bad. We might have to turn this plane around and go land again for uh, some extreme, uh, <laughs> some extreme smells on board. Good night, Sadie. You have to go outside. My goodness. She's just like laying on the floor, like, ah, just let out a fat rip. Ah, oh, sorry, dad, my fault. Does that smell? Thanks, appreciate it. Dogs. <laughs> oh, dogs. Oh my God. I'm not joking. I'm not, I wish you guys could smell it. I wish, I'm like, okay, show over. I can't, I can't do it anymore. Show's done. That's it, we're, we're off, off the air. Off the air due to my dogs intensely smelly fart don't ask just be lucky you're on that side of the screen okay and come over here and off the right side of our branches we're going to touch these with blue we're not going to try to cover up every single bit of dark shadow so we're barely putting any bits of blue on it right barely barely a couple little bits don't even have to be perfect what are you dogs doing can't you just chill Dad's in the middle of a show. I got Bailey texting me. She wants to pick it up. You guys are just ripping butt in my studio and really stinking up the place. What is going on tonight? Come over here very lightly, just tapping, tapping. I always say, you need to leave about half of the tree in darkness, right? Half of it has to retain that real deep, dark shadow, which means we're only putting about 25% of blue onto the tree. Then we're gonna have about 25% of white. And on each side of both of those, we're gonna have 25% of black, meaning 50 altogether. Now let's come back in, grabbing up our, some more white, liquid white paint, which is gonna make our white paint very runny and very wet and sloppy, which will come off the brush a lot easier. Then we go tap it. And then off the, the left side, we start chucking in little bits, little taps, right? Again, they don't have to be full branches. They just have to be a little bit of something. Don't cover up every spot. Look at how that trunk is exposed in there. That's really cool. And it's exposed right there too. Holy crap, that's a cool tree. 
it's just missing a bit, right? That's not the one you want for your for your Christmas tree at home because it's got that big hole in it where you see through to the trunk. That's realistic. Just like that, right? Coming in, little taps, little pressure. If it doesn't come off the brush, please don't push harder. Go back and reload the brush. Don't have to push harder. If you push harder, it's going to leave bigger, clumpier, gloppier bits that are gonna not work well. Just like that, another little light tap. And here's the last little piece, guys, as we come down and we start to go, okay, we've done an awesome painting, Josh. Here's where it could get bad. This is where you could screw it up. If you pushed it too hard, or if you didn't have enough paint, or if you covered up too many of your dark areas, or if you just made one look amazingly gorgeous like that, right? Anything can happen on any given Sunday. Hey, Sunday, sun oh, it's Saturday today. My, my fault, that's my fault. But boom, not covered up all the bits, left a bunch of dark spaces underneath all the white, little places for the critters, all right? Got little places for the critters to hide, like Bob used to say. Because we didn't cover too much. How many times have you been doing a painting and you've done too much? Me. Put a finger down if, if you put too many trees. Uh, me. Put a finger down if you've added too much paint to the sky. Me. Put a finger down if your mountain was too thick. Me as well. Uh, put a finger down if you did your whole painting and then you really messed up on those front trees. Same. Uh, and then put a finger down if, you know, you like to pick your nose with this last one. I don't know. <laughs> Do whatever. I've done it all, right? We've done everything. So, don't stress. That's what I was trying to tell Jamie Lynn when we were in our class earlier. She's like, yeah, but what about this? What about my trees? Are, are they okay? And this, that. And I'm like, why are you stressing? As long as it looks sort of like a tree shape in the distance, someone's going to love it. Someone's going to absolutely love it. So don't stress. No one is going to be see. You know who looks at every single detail? All of my haters, right? You guys don't have all of my haters. No one's looking for every wrong thing in your painting going, oh, the light should be over here and this would be in the shadow. And blah. Thank goodness you guys don't have to deal with that, okay? Just, just appreciate that you don't have that in your life because it's a giant drain. Uh, especially when you think you did a really cool painting, you're like, man, it's probably one of the best paintings I've ever done. And you go post it online and then a hundred people go, yeah, it's kind of uh, trash. Like you should have put the uh, white over here and this shit. And you go, hey, let me see your painting. They go, no, I don't paint, bro. <laughs> okay, but you tell me, you can ruin my self-esteem and ruin my ego for the day. Uh, that's fine. Thanks. Appreciate it. You know what I mean? So be, be grateful, guys. All you guys that have got a thousand followers, I bet every single one of your comments on your thousand follower pages is like, oh my God, so great. I love it. Love you. You're, dude, you're the best. Love, love, love. So you just get to a certain level, it goes love, and then <laughs> So, all depends. That's why I count. I count on all of you guys that love me, right, to battle against all the people that <laughs> So I need your guys' help. Need your help. By tapping the screen, by commenting, right, you're helping me get the live out to more people and share it. Remember, come up with a uh, name for this painting because we got to get going. Got to get going. Couple little birdies. Now, I would have to say, uh, as an influencer, uh, a tester of products, that this can. Sadie, my goodness, I'm sorry. Let's let's start that takeover in case I clip this for Liquitex. So I would have to say, for you know, as far as the canvas is concerned, fantastic canvas, very well made. Um, brush feels great sliding across it. It's very soft. It's very smooth, and. Uh, it's awesome. It's a, it's a little bit heavier. It's like more heavy duty. I like it. So, uh, yeah, get those Liquitex recycled canvases if you want to save the planet and feel good about it. So, right. Excellent, guys. There we go. And remember, I did this all on my own. Nobody sent me this canvas. I went to Michael's for the past like three weeks. I've been seeing these canvases going, I want to use that, but it's like $60 for the canvas. And then the next week, I want to use that, but man, it's like $60 for one canvas. Right? And then I finally went today. Guess what? Buy one, get one free. Yes! <laughs> so, we got, two, uh, we got two of these suckers. I'm gonna actually do one. I'm gonna paint it black with their Liquitex Black. So it'll be Liquitex Black Gesso on a Liquitex Recycled Canvas. Fire. Fire, fire. All right, come up with a name, guys. And uh, I'm gonna say goodbye to the tutorial, and then, uh, and then I gotta do the intro, and then we'll name the painting, and then I gotta go. No messing about, right? <clears throat> 
Man, this one came out fantastic. I am psyched. I am amped. I am pumped to see your version of this painting. Please send it to my Facebook page, facebook.com slash paintwithjosh. And until I see you guys again next time, take care. Have the rest of a good day. And bye bye. And now, come on, Josh, you got stage fright. Here we go. Hi, welcome back to Paint With Josh. Today we did a gorgeous 18 by 24 inch cold blue bridge. It's too long. Okay. Let's do it. Clip it, right? Here we go. So we got to put the brush down like this. Well, guys, I can't wait to see your version of this painting. It turned out absolutely stellar. And uh, until I see you guys again on the next time, one take Jake, baby. Call me one take Jake. Woo! <laughs> one take. And we're done. That's it. Thank you all. Turn that camera off. Well, guys, this one turned out fantastic. I'm... Man, this one came out great. I really can't wait to see your version of this painting. Please send it into facebook.com slash paintwithjosh. And until I see you again again next time, take care. All right, one more time.